I'm Nancy Durrant and I'm the arts editor of the Evening Standard and today Cultural Capital is brought to you from the London Design Biennale at Somerset House. In a minute we're going to pop inside and take a sneak peek and see what's going on but later on we'll be at Goodman Gallery talking about the London Gallery weekend. I'll be reviewing a brilliant film which is coming out today and as ever we'll be revealing our thing of the week but first let's go inside. Victoria, nice to see you. Everyone, this is Victoria Brokes. She's the director of the London Design Biennale. Victoria, give us a bit of an overview about what it's all about. So we are standing uh, at the heart of Somerset House and actually at the heart of London Design Biennale, which is a, um, a huge exhibition about the importance of design, bringing countries, cities and territories together to look at the important issues of the day and how design can help address those challenges. What can people expect when they come to visit the London Design Biennale? Well, the first thing I'd like to say is it's a lot of fun. It's a very hopeful exhibition. We may be designing in an age of crisis, but this isn't all, you know, the end is nigh. This is what can we do about it. Uh, but what you actually get is uh, country pavilions or installations throughout Somerset House, so you can wander freely. We have the most magnificent um, uh, forest in the courtyard of 400 trees. We have a fantastic exhibit of the Pavilion of the African Diaspora on the River Terrace. Those are the two big outdoor elements. And then exhibitions such as you see here, this one is 500 submissions from around the world responding to an open call about design in an age of crisis. So it's been a rotten year, but one of the things that's come out of it for a lot of people is this sense that actually we're all in the same boat, um, $500 million super yacht boats notwithstanding. Uh, and that sense of kind of burgeoning empathy is something that's behind this piece by Enneka Katwamala for the Finnish Pavilion at the Biennale. Enni, tell us about it. Well, welcome to the Empathy Echo Chamber. So that is the name of the installation that you're seeing here in person at Somerset House. And we've also created a virtual Empathy Echo Chamber that you can access through our website. So wherever you are in the world, you'll be invited to step inside. And I would love to invite you to step inside as well. Shall we go? <laughs> So the Empathy Echo Chamber reframes this idea of the Echo Chamber as, as a new kind of space that you don't step into on your own, but you step in with someone else together as we have done today. So instead of having everything you already know reflected back on these amazing mirrored reflective walls, inside you go through two short steps, um, a 15 minute long empathy experience to actually connect to see someone else, to be seen by them, and to explore what can happen in the space between us. There's tons to see here, but the Design Biennale isn't the only show in town this weekend. Today marks the start of the first ever London Gallery Weekend, in celebration of the city's thriving commercial gallery scene. Each day has a different geographical focus. Today is central, tomorrow is south, and on Sunday, East London gets its due. We talked to one of the people behind it, Joe Stella Sawicka, at Goodman Gallery in Cork Street, to find out more. We're here in Kapwani Kawanga's exhibition here at Goodman Gallery in London, and it's Kapwani's first show in London in over 10 years, following her award winning Pre du Champ show at Centre Pompidou in Paris. Kapwani is a really interesting artist. Um, she works in a very anthropological way and deals with different materials and asks the question, what do they tell us about history? This exhibition includes installation, sculpture, and quilts, all made out of an extraordinary range of materials from sisal to Atlantic seawater. This is the first edition of London Gallery Weekend, which is a new event for London, a free event that brings together over 140 galleries 
from central London, east London to south London. We really think it's an exciting time to be hosting the inaugural edition of London Gallery Weekend because we're really all coming back to life again. The galleries have been open for a few weeks and we're really celebrating the fact that there are tons of extremely high quality exhibitions, in some cases museum quality exhibitions, that are open to the public for free. We want to encourage people who may not usually go to galleries to come and step inside and see what an amazing range of exhibitions that are on display. Um, there's a, such a huge variety. We want to encourage everybody to be excited to explore different neighbourhoods of the city and see different things. We're really lucky in the city that we have a really rich and diverse gallery scene. It's the largest gallery festival in Europe. Um, we are really well known in the city for um, fostering new talent and even during this strange period of lockdown new galleries have opened which just goes to show that London still is a really exciting place to see young artists. London Gallery Weekend finishes on Sunday. Go to the website londongalleryweekend.art to find out more about the galleries taking part and see curated walking routes. Now. Here's a thing we love from one of London's fantastic collections. It's Thing of the Week. So here we have two absolute masterpieces of childhood by William Hogarth, the Graham children from 1742, and Thomas Gainsborough's portrait of his daughters, Margaret and Mary, from 1756. The children over here, the elder children, um, the oldest over here in the centre is actually looking like a young adult. She stands next to her younger sister who's playing around as if she's a little bit younger. And then the, the brother here is playing with a little um, small organ who he thinks is actually making the, the bird actually sing in the cage. But in fact, the bird is absolutely terrified by the cat that's popped up on the back of the chair there. Now, if we move over to this side, you can see the clock there with a cupid holding a scythe, which is Father Time. That's normally a symbol of the passing of time, but also potentially of death. And indeed, whilst this painting was being produced by uh, William Hogarth, little Thomas here actually dies. So in fact, the painting itself becomes a memorial to the sweetness of this little child here. Thomas Gainsborough does the same thing with his own children, Margaret and Mary. And the two girls are out playing, we can imagine, a little landscape near their home, um, wandering through the uh, landscape to find a little butterfly, a cabbage white, there sitting on a thistle. And the younger of the daughters is actually reaching out towards the butterfly, but alas, if she actually touches the butterfly, she may get pricked by the thistle. Again, this idea of the transitory nature of childhood, but also the issue of child mortality in the 18th century. So although these paintings are joyous and wonderful representations of childhood, they do also have this tinge of sadness around them in terms of the fleeting nature of childhood. This week I want to tell you about an amazing film which uses silence and things unsaid to speak volumes. No, it's not A Quiet Place Part 2, even though that is obviously brilliant and absolutely terrifying, but you're going to go and see that anyway. Instead, this week I wanted to tell you about another film that I think is really worth your attention. After Love is a new drama made by the British director and writer Alim Khan in his big screen feature debut. Mary Hussain is a happily married woman whose husband Ahmed dies just minutes into the movie, I'm not giving anything away. Shortly after the burial, Mary, who converted to Islam after her marriage, discovers that Ahmed, a ferry captain, had a secret family across the channel. The three main roles are all beautifully acted, but the film is anchored by a superb performance from the British actress Joanna Scanlon as Mary, who travels to Calais to confront the other woman, played by French actress Natalie Richard, but finds herself hesitantly going along with a mistake that allows her to explore her husband's other life undetected. It's a melodramatic premise that never quite slips into melodrama. Instead, Khan allows his attention to focus on the emotional turmoil and the skewed judgement that results from both love and from grief. The things we do and the decisions we make in, when in the grip of either or both of those things are brilliantly and compassionately observed. What's nice too is that Mary's commitment to her faith isn't questioned in the way that you might expect. There's no indication that even after the betrayal 
by Ahmed that she sees the daily rituals and requirements of her Muslim life as an imposition or resents them in any way. This is a really excellent debut film, beautifully made. Now, it's not on everywhere, but it's absolutely worth hunting out today in one of London's independent cinemas. Thanks so much for watching Cultural Capital. I hope you've enjoyed exploring the London Design Biennale with us. If you'd like to come along, the event is on until the 27th of June. And as always, if you've enjoyed the show, give us a like, spread it on your socials, tell us you love us in the comments, and hit subscribe. We'll be back next week.